Hello guys, welcome back to A7 Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily 7 Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the difference between the direct and bending stresses. So I will explain this difference between these two types of the stresses with the help of examples. Let's consider that this is any simply supported beam. And this simply supported beam is subjected to any inclined load of P. So due to this inclined load, the beam will subject it to diff two different types of the stresses. This inclined load can be divided into the vertical component. One will be the vertical component and the other will be, one will be the horizontal component of this load P. So the vertical component can be called as PY and the horizontal component can be called as the PX. So due to these two, two, due to these two components, we will have two different types of the stresses. So if I consider again that if only this is a beam simply supported and if I consider only the vertical load PY so we will have the bending stresses in this beam this beam will bend like in this and we will have the bending stresses so this load is called the transverse load and this load is acting perpendicular to the axis of the beam if I consider this is the axis of the beam so this beam is acting at a 90 degree to this axis of the beam. So due to the vertical load, we will have a stresses we call is the bending stresses. While due to the horizontal component of the load, we have another type of the stresses we call is the direct stresses. If I consider the simply supported beam again here, And this is the axis of the beam so due to this horizontal component this horizontal load component px we will have a stress in the axial direction along the axis of the beam it means that this load makes an angle of zero degree with the axis of the beam so we call it the axial load so this axial load creates the axial stresses in a beam and this beam will try to compress like for example it may be compressed, it shows compression of certain degree. So let's suppose this is a delta and this is compressed because there is a roller support and it cannot resist any horizontal force. So due to which it will be compressed in this way. So we will have a axial, we will have axial stresses in the along the axis of the beam. So this load which creates the axial stresses we call is the direct stresses in a beam. So this type of stresses is called is the direct stresses. And how to find the bending stresses and how to find the direct stresses? The direct stresses are really simple and it can be calculated as sigma d is equal to the p the load or px divided by the area. The area of this beam. If this is a cross section of this beam let's suppose this is the depth d of the beam and this is the width of the beam so the load acting on this beam and dividing by the cross section area we can find out the direct stresses and how to find out the bending stresses the bending stresses can be found out by this formula m c over i where m is the moment the bending moment where you find where you want to find out the bending stresses you just find out the bending moment value at this point and C is the value from the neutral axis of the beam to the top of the beam. This we call as the C, the distance from the neutral axis. And this is the neutral axis of the beam. So it is the distance from the neutral axis up to the top of the beam or up to the top of bottom of the beam. We call this distance as C. And I is the moment of inertia. You can find out moment of inertia according to the geometry of the object beam. So by plugging all these values, you can find out the bending stresses in a beam. So the two main types of the stresses we can find out by these two formulas. One is called the direct stress and one is called the bending stress. So if we have inclined load, so it means we have two different types of the stresses. If we have just vertical load or the transverse load on the beam, it means that we will only design our beam for the bending stresses. But if we have horizontal load only, then we have to design our beam for the axial load. If we have inclined load, then we will have to design our load 
for the combination of the stresses and this will be called as the combined stresses a sigma d and adding with the sigma b where sigma d is equal to the p over a and bending is mc over i so this equation is called as the combined stresses so if inclined load is acting on the beam so we have to use this equation for finding out the combined stresses in a beam similarly let us consider this in the column if this is the axis of the column and this is the load acting at the center of the column let us suppose this is the P so due to this load we will have a direct x a direct stresses in this beam so this load is acting along the axis of the beam so we call this the stresses creates due to the concentric load is called as the direct stresses or the axial stresses so it will be again direct stresses will be called as P over A the load and dividing by the area of this the cross section area of this column this is the cross section of this column so it will be D the depth and the width of the column so dividing the load divided by the area we get the direct stresses on this column but if the load if this load is now it at a certain eccentricity from the center let us suppose this load it at the corner P and it is away from the center at a distance of E E is called eccentricity so this load will create some stresses we call is the bending stresses now you cannot use simply this formula to find out the stresses in a column you cannot design the column by using this formula so you will have to use another formula to find out the stresses because now the load is not at the axis of the column so which formula I have to use bending stress formula the MC or I the moment the bending moment due to, creates due to this load because now due to this load the column may deflect and this is the column and this is a centric load so this column may deflect in this way so this column may deflect in this way so we have to find out the moment value the C is the distance from the neutral axis up to the top of the column section or bottom and I is the moment of inertia so we can find out the bending stresses in this column and we have to use this formula because now the load is not acting at the at the axis at the center of the column but away from the center at a distance of E which is called eccentricity so now we have to use the bending stress formula if it was acting at the center of the column so we have to find out the stresses which are called as the direct stresses and very simply dividing the load by the cross section area of the column so also in column we have two different type of the stresses one is called as the direct stresses and the other one is called as the bending stresses so it depends upon the load that how the load acts on your structural member Hope you guys understand what is the main difference between these two type of the stresses and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily seven engineering videos thank you for watching our video